Today we're going to be adjusting the clutch on my Banshee because I adjusted it like crap last time and now it's getting worse and worse and it's dragging. So there's a method to the madness. I already drained the coolant. You need to drain the coolant because you got to take the clutch cover off and coolant runs through it. So you got to drain the coolant. I don't want to drain the oil because I just changed it. Um, I don't want to make a mess, I don't want to deal with it, so I'm just going to tip the bike on the side. And I would like to use a tire for protection. For nerf bars, and then I have some old ATV tires that are adjustable, slotted. And I'm going to put them under the side in case it needs it. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this guy over. Side. How marvelous. Right. That guy here. So taking crap apart. You have nerf bars in the way, pain in the ass. But I don't have to take mine off. I just have to work around them. So I remove the rear brake. Can I remove the brake clip, the C clip that holds it in? Gonna remove the brake, rear brake return spring. Close your eyes for that. Should I duck? Yes. You gotta be careful with that because it, it'll shoot back at you. Set it right here. Now you have a little makeshift cotter pin over here and remove the remove that and it holds the it holds the pin to the rear brake master. And there goes that. Falls out, just like that. And then this can come out. Oops, I lost my washer. Then lose your parts. And now your rear brake can wiggle out. You, there's plenty of room to get it out without removing the peg or the bars. Set it aside. I don't want fuel everywhere. So what you guys didn't see is we had fuel leaking out of the fuel cap. So we had to readjust our angle and we added some more junk tires. Wow. Take a look at that skid plate. How much of a beating is it? That was brand new not long ago. We got a little dent right there. Yep. All right, so, so I have to say though, I feel this is sketchy, it's but not. okay. We're gonna take the kicker off. I'm gonna take the bolt all the way out, or the kicker won't come out. Now the kicker should just slide right off. If it doesn't, you can put a screwdriver or something in here, pry that guy. But the reason why it has, the bolt has to come all the way out is there's a little groove here. See that? And the bolt sits like that. So if you don't get it all the way out, it's not gonna come out. So the bolt has to come all the way out, put it back in your kicker so you don't lose it. Now we can take the clutch cover bolts off. My favorite. Loosening them up first and then we'll spit them out. Try it. If you're unsure, don't. If you're unsure of your Allen or if these are factory bolts, take the nerf bars off. If you have them, take your peg off and get an impact screwdriver. If you don't know what an impact screwdriver is, Google it. You're gonna need it because it's got Phillips head bolts in there and I guarantee you that most of them will not come out. The impact screwdriver will get them out. So that'd be a good upgrade to do your case if you haven't already. Yeah, get the get the bolts. Matt Daddy sells a nice kit. Get the bolts for sure. There's no, nothing better than upgrading these crappy bolts that Yamaha put in here from the factory. The 
there's one bolt here behind the peg that you can't use an extension on, but if you have, get yourself a socket set like this that I just dropped. This is a five millimeter and that's what the case bolts use, but it'll make your life so much easier. Spin them up the rest of the way because there's not enough room. This is the only one that's kind of a pain in the butt if you don't want to pull your peg out. And I don't want to because I don't think my nerf bar is off right now. So pull this guy out all the way. Set it aside. And now we'll get the rest of them. You should be able to use your gasket. They're reusable. Just be careful cutting, pulling it off. As long as you didn't, somebody didn't put a whole bunch of RTV on there, you'd be able to reuse it. I reuse them. Never had a problem leaking. That's leaking because of that. There's an org that's messed up here, not because the case is looser, whatever you want to call it. This bolt right here, you can reference that next to the dipstick, it's longer than all the other ones. That is your only longer bolt, it's not threaded all the way. And all the other ones are the same length. Oops. Do all tools do that or just our tools do that? Just our tools, because they're worn out. All right. You can pull your dipstick out if you want the leverage. Oh, the sucker's stuck now. Let's improvise. There we go. I like to take it out and put a finger in there. Why? For leverage. You got a hole over here for your coolant and you got your oil fill here. And if you just gently pull the rock back and forth this off the crossover tube, the coolant pipe, you want to slide it all off and then you can pop it out without removing your peg. Nice and clean in there, no clutch material. That's why I don't want to change the oil and waste my oil. Because I knew that's what it looked like. I set it aside so no. Debris gets in there. Our gasket still looks good. I'm gonna wipe it down. There's a little crap on it. Oil smells good. I don't see any issues with this. Just out of adjustment. Yeah, you can see the whole pool of gear oil there. No, nope, so. I can't from this angle. Well, look from this angle. You see all the gear oil there? I don't want to waste all that. I'll probably have to add a little bit to it because I think it was a little bit low. Oh, look, I'm missing an exhaust hanger spring. Well, there you go. See the things you find out when you tilt your quad on the side. All right, so on the way of justice, this is your lock nut. This is supposed to spin like that. It's supposed to have that play in it. Now, when I go press the clutch, and I can see it already, the pressure plate doesn't, doesn't disengage all the way. It drags a little bit, I can see it. The clutch needs, it needs adjusting for sure. So we're gonna loosen our clutch perch over here. So this is your clutch perch, clutch side, clutch cable. You wanna loosen it. Mine's a little stubborn, the adjuster on it. Plus my hands are slick right now, so you wanna turn it in. You wanna turn it in, kind of, to the point where this has got a lot of play in it, and mine's got a little bit to go. All right, so see all the play in it? Let's turn it out a little bit, just a little bit, but that's that's excessive, and that's, that's where you want to be to start off. See, there's plenty of play to turn it in. 
Okay, so I have an aftermarket pancake bearing. The uh, factory Yamaha one won't have an Allen head here. This is a four millimeter. It's a Mac Daddy Racing aftermarket pancake bearing. I uh, strongly urge people to upgrade to this because the pancake bearing that's in there uh, prevents your clutch ball and your clutch ride from welding. And then you have to split the cases to fix that and get it out. So this is a very cheap upgrade when you're doing a clutch. I don't remember what it costs, 20 bucks, it's well worth it. But the, the Yamaha style is similar. You got a lock nut here and then you just tighten this, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. I have to go this way. So I already, I already, I got, I'm, this is, by the way, I mean, meaning to ramble. This is, it's gonna spin, it's supposed to. That's the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna, not the lock nut, the whole thing will spin together as one. It's supposed to be that loose. It's not supposed to be tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and break the lock nut loose. And that's only on that style one, right? Yes. So I already, you wanna break it loose on these. Well, no, the Yamaha one's also gonna be loose. That's got a Phillips head here. It's also gonna be this loose, but you wanna break this pancake bearing here. It's a 13 millimeter for the aftermarket one. Then you wanna get I don't know if you can get a shot in there, Alice. Behind the behind the jam nut, you want to loosen your jam nut up. See the little notches there on the actual bearing. So you want to get a wrench on those, like so, Mom. to keep it from spinning. Hey, Mom. Okay. So to adjust your clutch on these aftermarket adjusters, 10 millimeter wrench underneath this collar, underneath on this collar here, underneath the jam nut to and then you tighten and once you start feeling a little resistance you want to stop okay because that's about that's good then you go check your clutch for okay. clutch separating them look at it now you can see that the pressure plates actually disengaging the plates now they're not there are some of them are sticking but that's that that's what you want that's good right there so now we can lock it down So put your, put your Allen inside and you put your, lock your lantern jam nut. Turn your, you know, in order to uh, tighten this, you gotta turn your ratchet to the other position so it doesn't spin loose on you and be careful doing it. And then you just jam it tight and that's it. And this is still gonna be loose on you. This is this whole assembly is gonna turn. See that? Behind there, it's all turned. It's supposed to be like that. So now we actually have a good functioning clutch. And we'll double check. There's, there's a little play in it, but it's actually disengaging the clutch all the way around. And it wasn't doing that before. When I'd come to a stop, it would drag and didn't wanna go into gear. But when you fired it up and you go put it into gear, the engine would die because the clutch was still dragging and it would just go into like direct drive without a clutch. So that's why we had to do that today. Why now for the reassembly. So clean your gasket up a little bit when you can get the oil off of it. There's, a little, there's always gonna be a little residue. Um, I got lucky. Sometimes these will tear. I will say this is a cheaper gasket that's actually from Yamaha and they do like to tear over here in certain places. They do have these dowels though that they sit on. There's a dowel back here, here, and they do go over, sit, sit over this uh, water pump neck. I mean, yeah, water pump passage here because this is where your water pump actually is. This is your water pump drive gear and uh, everything looks great. So we're gonna go ahead and slam them back together. Okay. There is an O-ring over here. Um, replace it if you have one. I usually don't. I haven't had a problem. Well, I do when I have a new one, but I don't have a new one right now, so I'm not going to replace it. I, uh, they do like the leak. I won't say they don't, but I feel, full, I feel all the way around, and I still feel a nice seal on it, nice ridge all the way around. I can feel it protruding through, so. It's not going to leak on us. Just make sure your case side is clean. And this is where that O-ring rides in. So make sure that's nice and clean. And my case is clean. It's just black. Um, I think somebody used silicone on it. I wire wheeled this guy. And 
I cleaned it off as good as I could, but uh, it'll seal, it'll be fine. So we're gonna go check your water pump gear, make sure there's no teeth broken on it. These are plastic, um, check your bearing. Mine's pretty good shape, I just rebuilt it not long ago. We're gonna go ahead and slam it back on now. Don't mind my three-year-old, he came in here to give me some pointers on this. So you wanna go ahead and plop it in just like so, align it with your bolt holes, and it should go right on. There it goes. And that's a good sign when it goes on a little bit stiffer than it normally does over this O-ring here, because then you know it's gonna have a seal. And then all we gotta do is put our case bolts back in, put our coolant hose back on, kick our parking, our parking reverse, uh, rear brake, and we're done. So, I don't torque these. Honestly, don't know the torque, it's not much. Going across pattern, kind of like you tighten a wheel. It'll seat down properly. If you go around in a circle like that, it might leak on you. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and go in a cross pattern. So we're gonna put our kicker back on now. Actually, let me put my dipstick back in so I don't get more crap in there. for now and uh, we're gonna put our kicker back on the way we put this guy on is you know that's wrong well not necessarily but it's got to be over one more yeah no too much I gotta rebuild this kicker there'll be a video on that too but I don't have time for that today Too much. There we go. That's the right way of putting it on. See, mine rattles and it hits the case because it's worn out. It might need a new one. But a lot of guys will put them on and it'll be like over here or something. That's not the right way because you won't get enough of a kick on it. Now just pull it back, stick your 12 millimeter bolt through, 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter bolt head. And I will do it the easy way today. And then I will get my ratchet to tighten it because my drill sucks. Sorry, camera. Get it snug, no signs to it. Um, you saw the little groove in the shaft there in the spline shaft where the kicker actually assembly goes on to. This won't come off. This, this bolt will have to come completely out for this to fall out. All right, so now we put our parking brake lever back on. Why do I keep calling a parking brake? It's the rear brake, damn it. I don't even have a parking brake on this. Anyway, turn it sideways like this, a little bit up and push it down on. And then this lever right here will clear the foot bag and you'll be able to push it back on and just get your rear master. And uh, that's it. I like to put the clip back on the parking brake right now. There's a little groove here. Again, no signs to it. Push it back on. Sometimes it helps when you hit it with something, like a hammer or a wrench. Or use your
or actually get your ratchet because that's a good hammer too. I'm just too lazy to walk over and get a hammer. Clip that back on. So after you get your C-clip on the brake pedal, put your pin back through the master cylinder right here. This goes from underneath here. And there's a washer that'll keep it. And there's a little cotter pin that goes through a little pinhole here. And just bend it so this won't fall off because this washer is what holds your this washer is what holds your parking brake um nah. see i call it parking braking what the hell it's not a parking brake it's a rear brake it holds your little retainer washer okay so we got our cotter pin in here that's not going anywhere it's connected to the rear master now you want to put a put your return spring back on it because if you don't you're not going to have any return pressure so it goes here and then it clips right here and there's a little mushroomed so you could see you could see it back here there's a little mushroom deal in this you just pull it like so and it goes right on And there's your return spring and you're done now we will hook our coolant line back up real quick since we're already here the springs always in a way it's for protection from heat and just for the holes rubbing and we gotta tighten it up And we're good. The Banshees, I noticed when you put coolant back at them, at least for me, and it should be that way for everybody. You don't need to really bleed the system. It's got a uh, return hose up here from the top of the head. It gets all the air out usually. And um, it's right here. I mean, everybody knows what they are because if they have a Banshee and they work on them, they'll know. But that's it. Now we can turn, turn it back over and lay it back on the ground. Now is the time you tell if it's leaking. No, it's not. That's good. We move this guy back over. Take our adjustable wheels off. Show the show them the adjustable wheels, Alice. They're adjustable. So if anybody wants a set, we can hook you up. Those are nice. They're great for propping up quads when you're working on them.
How's it feel? Awesome. It's all good? Yeah, I think we have a good clutch now. You know, we've got to put the hood back on and it's ready to rock. Awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.